Hello, this is Galit Gofarb and thank you very much for joining me here today. Today I'm going to be talking about fluoride and whether it's good or harmful to our health. Now fluoride is a mineral found really pretty much everywhere and it's ever present and it's also found in our bones and our teeth. Now dentists use fluoride through toothpaste and mouthwashes to strengthen our teeth because uh, fluoride helps rebuild tooth enamel, it helps reverse tooth decay in the early stages especially, and it protects our teeth from harmful bacteria. Now in many countries, as a public health measure, including the United States, they also add fluoride to water supply to prevent tooth decay. Now the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention state that drinking fluoridated water lowers tooth decay by about 25% in children and in adults. So it does have a major effect on our teeth and our health. Now aside from teeth, tooth protection, fluoride also serves other purposes such as medical scans, in pesticides and in the creation of aluminum and Teflon products as well as a, a cleaning agent. Overall, fluoride has many purposes and it can be beneficial to our health and is widely available. However, more significant amounts of fluoride will lead to several health problems which I'll discuss in this video and how we can avoid them. The first one is dental fluorosis, which is a problem caused by a substantial intake of fluoride. And it can be identified by white or brown patches on the front of the teeth, especially of children that are exposed to high amounts of fluoride before the development of their permanent teeth. Fluorosis is very common and found in about 41% of adolescents in the United States, even if their teeth have no stains on them. And this is because they may have developed the fluorosis after their permanent teeth grew in. In this case, fluorosis goes unmarked, but still that does have a health effect on other parts of their body. So in preventing fluorosis, it's hard, highly advisable that you make sure that neither you nor your children are drinking tap water on a regular basis. And if you are drinking tap water regularly, then you make sure you want it to go through a filtration system that removes fluoride from the water, or go ahead and drink bottled water. Now make sure you're also not putting on too much toothpaste when brushing your teeth especially for young children, and make sure they're not swallowing the toothpaste, but are rinsing it out of their mouth. And make sure you're also not using most mouthwatches, which also have fluoride in them. And this is especially if you're drinking a lot of tap water on a regular basis. Now, another condition that comes from excess uh, fluoride intake is skeletal fluorosis. And as the name suggests, it is in many ways very similar to dental fluorosis, but it affects the bones instead of the teeth. Now the results of skeletal fluorosis are very damaged bones and joints. Skeletal fluorosis occurs from long-term exposure to significant amounts of fluoride, usually from drinking tap water regularly. The cases typically happen in mostly in less developed countries where there are already higher amounts of fluoride around naturally in the environment, which reach the water supply that already has fluoride in it. In the US, on the other hand, the prevalence is very low for this disease. The next condition that comes from excessive fluoride intake are thyroid problems. Exposure to fluoride through tap water was found to increase thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH providing evidence of a suppressed thyroid gland, also known as hypothyroidism. And the symptoms of hypothyroidism range from tiredness, disrupted heart rhythm, and altered metabolism. And the effects of fluoride on the thyroid gland were especially prominent in people with low iodine levels. And this is because iodine helps remove excess fluoride from the body. Now, too much fluoride has also been found to cause adverse effects on the parathyroid gland, which then produces excessive parathyroid hormones. And this affects the bones as it depletes calcium from their structure, which then results in brittle bones. Another condition that comes from excessive fluoride is increased likelihood for lower cognitive abilities as well as ADHD in children. 
In 2017, a study claimed that pregnant women exposed to higher amounts of fluoride gave birth to children with significantly lower IQs and cognitive abilities. The research was conducted on almost 300 pregnant women and subsequently followed the development of these children over several years. Another study examined the relationship between exposure of fluoridated water and the prevalence of ADHD among children and adolescents in the US. And they found that artificial water fluoridation positively predicted prevalence of ADHD 10 to 20 years later in these uh, children that had then grown up. So what's the bottom line? Well, tap water fluoridation does not provide any control of the level of fluoride exposure that children and adults receive. And because of this, many people receive too much fluoride through tap water. On top of that, scientists have shown that the benefit to teeth that comes from fluoride can also come from topical fluoride application, or in other words, just using toothpaste that has fluoride. Also, in my opinion, adding fluoride to water systems is an undemocratic approach to public health. Now, if you do want more information on whether your tap water is fluoridated and with how much, then the CDC has an online tool available which provides information on which locations use fluoride in the water supply and how much, especially in the United States, yeah. Now, if you do find that you live in a place with high levels of fluoride in your tap water, Aim to use fluoride-free dental products, especially for your children who are the ones that are most susceptible to fluoride-induced health problems. You may also wish to use a water filter, and the one I recommend is the handy Epic Pure Water Filter Jug, which is set to remove 99.99% of all contaminants, including fluoride, and it is also 100% recyclable and 100% BPA-free. But the absolute best advice for tooth health is to eat foods that our teeth were meant to deal with on a regular basis and to give them the stimulation they need. Foods like nuts, whole foods, whole grains, fruits and vegetables are excellent. You see, when too many soft foods or sugar-rich foods and beverages are consumed, the teeth become decayed and rot. And when healthy food options are consumed and there are no lacking nutrient deficiencies in the diet, then the teeth of the person will be healthy and strong. So I hope you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to my channel. And if you want more information on health and nutrition for free, visit my website at www.thegorilladiet.com for a lot of information. Thank you very much.